Hey there listeners, this is your host Trends signing in, and welcome to another episode of Trends Podcast. For today's episode, I will be doing a book review of a young adult book series by author Stephanie Meir. The titles are Eclipse and Breaking Dawn, and also follow me on my social media accounts such as Instagram at TrendsYBA, Twitter at Trends Ibanez, and on YouTube as Katrina Ibanez. Without further ado, let's begin the book review. I will be reading the summary or synopsis that you can find at the back of the book. The book is titled Eclipse from the Twilight Saga. Bella, Edward's soft voice came from behind me. I turned to see him spring lightly up the porch steps, his hair windblown from the running. He pulled me into his arms at once, just like he had in the parking lot, and kissed me again. This kiss frightened me. There was too much tension, too much strong of an edge to the way his lips crushed mine, like he was afraid we only had so much time left to us. As Seattle is ravaged by a string of mysterious killings, and a malicious vampire continues her quest for revenge, Bella once again finds herself surrounded by danger. In the midst of it all, she is forced to choose between her love for Edward and her friendship with Jacob, knowing that her decision has the potential to ignite the age's struggle between vampire and werewolf. With her graduation quickly approaching, Bella has one more decision to make, life or death, but which is which? Readers captivated by Twilight and New Moon will eagerly devour Eclipse, the much-anticipated third book in Stephanie Meyer's riveting vampire love saga. And now on to my book review of the third book in the Twilight Saga series, Eclipse. Author Stephanie Meir. Genre is young adult fantasy and adventure and a little bit of romance. There are 629 pages to this book and I started reading this book on the 12th of August 2021 and finished reading this book on the 17th of August 2021 and although I have both a physical book and an ebook, I read the physical book. So if you want to read a book about friendship, love, vampires, werewolves, and one human against an army of vampires, then this is the book for you. The third book in the series, I would definitely recommend reading this. There is one thing, or should I say one person that I hate in the story, and that is Bella Swan. Even though she knows that she will be with Edward forever, and yet she keeps leading Jacob Black on. Due to her accent, Jacob does some things that I don't like, such as kissing her without her permission. Horrible things are happening in Seattle. People are going missing, and then there are the killings. Bella has been grounded due to her antics in the previous book. Graduation is just around the corner, and at some point Bella and Edward fly to Florida using Carlisle and Esme's birthday gift, which was about to expire, to visit Renee, Bella's mom. While that was happening, the rest of the Collins and the pack of LaPush are hunting Victoria. Once they come back, Bella decides that she has the right to visit Jacob in La Push. So when Jacob arrives unexpectedly at Forks High, Bella rides the motorcycle with him and they catch up on what they missed. Someone has also been creating newborn vampires in Seattle. At some point, Bella notices that her favorite red blouse and some of her pillows are missing, thus cluing Edward in that an unknown vampire has been inside Bella's room in her house. Jacob gets filled in and takes upon himself to guard Bella's house when the Collins are not around, since the rest of the pack mistrusts the Collins. In one of Bella's visits to La Push, as she is invited by Jacob to a bonfire. In this part of the book, the origins of the werewolves were told, but what intrigued Bella the most is the story of the third wife, in which the third wife sacrifices herself to save her husband, her children, and her tribe by stabbing herself through the heart, thus distracting the cold one, and allowing her husband and her children to kill and dispose of the cold one. During graduation, Bella pieces all the pieces together, her theory that the newborn army was created by Victoria to be used in her vendetta against Bella for getting her mate killed, the unknown vampire getting undetected into Bella's room without triggering Alice's vision was a test run and it worked. Now there was a newborn army in Seattle with Bella's scent ready to be used to kill Bella. At the graduation party hosted by Alice in the Collins house, Alice has a vision about how the newborn army will be coming to Forks and that they will be outnumbered. Jacob turns up at the party with Embry and Quill and they get told about the newborn army. 
The pack and the Collins form a truce or alliance against Victoria and her newborn army. We get to learn about Jasper's past as he trains the vampires and wolves on how to deal with and defeat newborn vampires. So, will the pack and the Collins survive the fight? Just how much has the pack grown? What is the origins of the werewolves in La Push? What happened to Jasper before he met Alice and the rest of the Collins that he is the expert against newborn vampires? Will Belle Swan ever stop hurting both Jacob Black and Edward Collin? Read the book to find out, my dear listeners. Read the book to find out. the synopsis slash summary from the back of the fourth book in the Twilight Saga series Breaking Dawn written by author Stephanie Meir here it goes don't be afraid I murmured we belong together I was abruptly over I was abruptly overwhelmed by the truth of my own words this moment was so perfect so right that there was no way to doubt it. His arms wrapped around me, holding me against him. It felt like every nerve ending in my body was a live wire. Forever, he agreed. When you loved the one who was killing you, it left you no options. How could you run? How could you fight? When doing so would hurt that beloved one. If your life was all that you had to give, how could you not give it if it was someone you truly loved? To be irrevocably in love with a vampire is both fantasy and a nightmare, woven into a dangerously heightened reality for Bella Swan, pulled in one direction by her intense passion for Edward Collin, and another by her profound connection to werewolf Jacob Black, to mentalist year of temptation, loss, and strife have led her to the ultimate turning point. Her imminent choice to either join the dark but seductive world of immortals or to pursue a fully human life has become the thread from which the face of true tribes hangs now that bella swan has made her decision a startling chain of unexpected events is about to unfold with potentially devastating and unfathomable consequences just when the frayed strands of bella life first discovered in twilight then scattered and torn in new moon and eclipse seem ready to heal and knit together could they be destroyed forever? This astonishing, breathlessly anticipated conclusion to the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, illuminates the secrets and mysteries of this palm-binding romantic epic that has entranced millions. 
And now on to my actual book review of Breaking Dawn, the fourth book in the Twilight Saga series by author Stephanie Mayer. Genre is of course young adult, romance, fantasy, and adventure. There are 754 pages of this book. I started reading this book on the 23rd of August 2021 and finished reading this book on the 26th of August 2021 and yet once again I have both the physical copy and the ebook but I read the ebook. So if you would like to read a book about love, friendships, vampires, werewolves slash shave shifters, half human half vampire hybrid and a stand against the royalty slash authority of the vampire world, this is the book for you. And I would definitely recommend reading this book two books ago. The werewolves of Le Push were introduced. In this book, it is revealed that they are not really werewolves, or as the Volturi calls them, children of the moon. Sheaf shifters, often mistaken as werewolves, are descended from the ancient spirit warriors of the Quility tribe. Back then, warriors and chiefs could leave their bodies and wander as spirits, communicate with animals, and hear each other's thoughts. However, a change impacted the tribe members hugely during Taha Aki's leadership and permanently changed their powers to shape-shifting into giant wolves. When a member of the current generation comes across the scent of vampires, his physique will build before he faces the first time. Shave shifters of the Quility tribe are called Quility Wolves. This is the only book in the whole series where I love all the main characters and their allies. Mysteries surrounding some character relationships with each other are finally explained. It seems that while female vampires cannot be impregnated by their male counterparts, it does not stop female humans with male vampire partners from getting pregnant. Thus, Renesmee is conceived and later born as a half-human, half-vampire hybrid. The reason for the unnatural connection between Bella and Jacob is solved. It seems that Jacob has been feeling the pull of his imprint, which just happens to be Bella's child, Renesmee. The moment Renesmee was born, Jacob's world was complete, and as a plus, he gets his old relationship with Bella back as her other best friend. Friend. Due to being misinformed about Renesmee's true nature, the Volturi finally has the reason to challenge the Collins. Both sides are gathering witnesses and allies for what seems to be an upcoming battle. For the Volturi, there is their three leaders, Arrow, Cases, and Marka, and the remaining wives, Shane, Alec, Felix, Dimitri, Chelsea, Renata, and the other members of the Guard and their group of witnesses. For the Collins, Denali Coven, the Egyptian Coven, some nomads like Peter and Charlotte, Whitlock, and other friends of the Collins, the shapeshifters led by their alphas Jacob and Sam, and surprisingly, the Romanians? The questions are, will there be a battle? If yes, who will win? Will there be any survivors? Why are the Romanians there? Is Renesmee the only hybrid? And why are there two alphas for the shapeshifters? If you want to know everything that happens in this book, my dear listeners, read the book to find out. Hey there, listeners. That's all for today's episode of Trans Podcast. You can find Trans Podcast on Apple Podcast and Spotify. Don't forget to follow or subscribe and leave a comment. And if you want to hear more book reviews and other topics, stay tuned for another episode of Trans Podcast and keep on listening.